Thank you for tuning in to Entertain the Geeky, your source for nerd news. Guys, what's going on? Entertain the Geeky here. This is Chris. And Roger. And we are a two-man wolf pack tonight. Can you believe that? Two-man again. People are ditching us. Well, it's not really. Okay, so let, let's get, let, let's actually get into this. So we had a guest scheduled um, earlier, like later in the month, he, he was going to come on. And then we, we changed the date on him. And apparently he didn't realize that. Because he just read the message today mm. when he said, I'm in Hannibal uh, at a steampunk convention. I kind of want to go to the steampunk convention. I'd be down. Tara loves steampunk. Like, you know, I find it odd that like there, there's subgroup now of conventions. You have your anime, your steampunk, your Ren Fairs, your gaming convention. It is pretty odd, isn't it? Yeah, when it used to be just kind of all one lump sum. Yeah, it was, hey, nerds, We're this is together. for you. Right. Um, it doesn't really matter what you like. We're here together. But yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of subgenres now. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. It is wonderful to see this. I mean, yeah, they all come together like Comic-Con and, and, I was gonna say, and the big the, cons. You have the big ones. But the fact that they're actually cons devoted to your subgenre now. It just shows how big everything is. Well, like anime. Look how big anime is right now. It has been for a long time. Though. You know, I remember me being the old the old guy in the room here. Anime was like, here's Akira, here's Robotech, here's some 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 anime porn, and that's pretty much what you had. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, we don't talk about Dragon Ball Z. Sorry, never got into that. But you then you had Ninja Scroll, and like that was it. That was pretty much the anime you had going out. Dude, no. Back in the day, yeah. No, Inuyasha. Inuyasha's newer. It's like how old? 10 to 12, 12 years old. Yeah, okay. I'm talking when I was 12, 13, 14 okay, years old. Okay, you're talking a while ago. Yeah, I'm talking back before Pokemon came out. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like really it was like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh really started the explo- the, the the current explosion where anime is just now everywhere. I mean, I was 16, 17 when Trigun came out, Cowboy Bebop. Neo Genesis Evangelion. I mean, I, I think I think Inuyasha is the same age as Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, but still, that was seventeen. You know, when I was seventeen, eighteen, that was still, you know, a while ago. I mean, but for the last like ten years, there's been huge anime cons. Yeah, there have, and it's amazing. Now, I will say, I don't think the anime is as good as it was back in the day. But I haven't watched enough. You're just old manning it right I now. I am old manning it. I'm it's sorry. It's not what I know. Well, yeah, kind of. Like, I tried Attack on Titan. It wasn't as good as, like, Trigun. I didn't care for it. I, you see, I I never got super into the anime thing. And it's just because I've always had interests outside of my nerdy stuff. And with just Hold the on. little bit of nerdy stuff that I have. What interest did you have outside of your nerdy stuff? What do you mean? You said I have interest outside my nerdy Yeah, so stuff. I've always been into like active stuff. Like I played paintball for a long time. Very no, you long don't. Time. And paintball's kind of nerdy. I did play paintball for a long time. Paintball's nerdy. I used to play tournament ball. Yeah, nerdy. Um, that's fine. Okay, so it's it good. wasn't. That was that was considered an extreme sport at the time. <laughs> True story. Um, no, that was it was an alternative sport. Not many people like it. Wasn't people might go play with a bachelor party or something. Yeah, but uh, it wasn't super mainstream. I. You know, that's one thing I've never done. I've never done the paintball. I love it. You love it? I love it. I've never um, done it. It's on my list. Parkour. Like, I got really into parkour for a while. Did you? Yeah. Did you, like, you know, do the whole street running type through windows and whatnot like I saw in James Bond? I'm not God when it comes to that. <laughs> uh, so, like, I, I'm not on the level of a Jesse LaFleur or a Kyle Mendoza or a lot of the big athletes, um, and there are a ton of them that I'm not naming, forgive me, David Bell, who was the father of parkour, as he proclaims himself. So it's like Al Gore saying he's the father of the internet? Basically. Okay. Um, parkour's been around for forever. Like, as long as people have been moving, that's been a thing. Well, I mean, let's be honest, I've done a little parkour. I would jump on the little uh, yellow stems sticking up at, like, grocery stores or whatever and go yeah. over it. That counts, right? Basically, yeah. God damn it! I'm a fit athlete now. Uh, so, you know, there's that, and I do rock climbing now. You're going to fall to your death. I might. I I'm saw, not careful. I saw what happened to William Shatner in Star Trek V. You don't have a Spock to save you. I don't need one. Ooh. I'm that good. Are you? I mean, I'd like to fancy myself somewhat of a Spider-Man, if you will. <laughs> You're going to be like the 27 Days guy? You know, cut your arm off? That would No, <laughs> because you don't climb alone. <laughs> no offense to you, dude. Like, you did something very badass um, by chopping your own arm off. 
Did he though? Is that right? Like that's fucking badass. I you know when you're going through bone and shit with yeah, a pocket knife. I get that, but but it, it was kind of out of necessity. It wasn't like he looked at you and said, "Chris, watch what yeah. I do," and then he cuts you his hand you know off, many, staring you in the you eyes. Know how many people? Would just be like, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. <laughs> this I, is it. I mean, it depends on what hand it is. No. I mean, no. If, if it's most my jerking people, hand, I will probably say most I'm Most people would just be like, look at the situation. They'd be like, well, my fucking arm's pinned here. I'm not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> the last thing that they would think is, I have to cut this motherfucker off. I don't know. I've seen Saw. I, I know what happens when he's stuck in that situation. Yeah, you've seen a, a movie. Yeah, you cut your fucking leg off. No, that's pretend. Saw is pretend. No, it's true. <laughs> based off based true, story. true story. Oh my god, real quickly, I gotta tell you about this. Now, when I was in grade school, there's this kid whose name I will not say, but he asked the teacher one time, how do they get actors to die on screen? He was like, why would you take that job? He's like, like he's, he, he used this as an example. He went, Quint from Jaws. Why <laughs> would the guy playing Quint sign up for a movie to get eaten by a shark? We were in third grade, and the guy still had no concept of... of, of what was real and what was fake. I'm glad that you bring this up because Natalie Portman recently did an interview. And in this interview, she was talking about um, her kid is a fan of Star Wars. She's like, but I won't let him watch the movies that I'm in, the prequels. And a bunch of fans are like, ha, 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 I know why. But, <laughs> I know why, too. But, but the actual reason why, and this is what she explained, she's like, I, my child does not yet have understand the concept of death. Uh, and I die in that. She's like, I can't have him seeing his mom die right now. How old is the kid? I think like five or six. Yeah, I, I get that. Of uh, that, and you know the crappy acting. She was great. Well, you know what? Just watch one and two, and don't watch three. Or episode three was the only one worth watching out of all of them. I'm not going to disagree. It was it though. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was a good flick. It We've was, already had this yeah, conversation. It was the best of the first three. I guess you're right. It was on par with the other stuff, dude. Like we don't want to like it because it's prequels, and on par is. Okay, first off, we know where I stand on Star Wars. I think it's highly overrated. To an extent. Yeah, I, I do. I think Star Wars is highly overrated, and we've gotten one good movie out of seven. But Which one? Empire Strikes Back. Ah. Empire Strikes Back is the best of the Star Wars movies. See, I like, I think, uh, I really like episode three. I think that's my favorite. That's very sad. It's not. Like, yeah, it's not a, that a, new, good. a New Hope is good. No, like A New Hope is okay. It's not good. It's actually kind of crap storytelling. We have, there's no reason for us to hate the people we hate. Like, at least in Empire Strikes Back. That's, that's real life. Like, there's no reason for no. us to hate most of the people that we hate. I have reasons for everyone I hate. No, you don't. I do, too. Every single person I hate. Have you met Chris Pine? I have, I have a reason for hating Chris Pine. You don't have a reason yes, to hate Yes, I do. Him. Not a real one. You can't. There is a real reason to hate Chris Pine. It's fucking he science says, fiction. He says you can't make smart TV anymore, smart Star Trek anymore. He's a fucktard. That son of a bitch. Fuck you, Chris Pine. Brought to you by Brian Johannigmeyer. We still haven't received payment for that. Yeah. Where's our checks, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, like, like to me, like... A New Hope, it's okay, but like, there's no reason other than the crawl text to say why we hate the Empire. Um, at least with Empire Strikes Back, they, they kind of take it away from the actual galactic war and they make the story personalized. It is Luke and Leia and Han trying to make a difference in the galaxy. And then you find out that Vader's father... The only father. reason that these motherfuckers are together and trying to make a difference in the galaxy is because of the first fucking movie. But you don't need... Like, okay, you... If you never see A New Hope and you watch Empire Strikes Back, right? None of what happened in the first movie has any impact on the second movie. They're almost standalone movies. All three of them are almost standalone movies. I disagree, but okay. The only one that actually ties together is, is Han's Frozen Carbonite. I mean, you get reintroduced to the characters right off the bat in Empire Strikes Back. They, they, they talk about everything. You know, it's like, hey, Han, old buddy. Like, boom. That's all you need to know is you Luke know and what, Han know each other. You know what's funny about that is a lot of people don't like Empire that much. I think you're wrong. I think more people like Empire than you realize. I, I'm not saying that people dis, like hate it or anything like that, but I think of the original trilogy, I think more people are uh, New Hope and Jedi. No, I think more people hate Jedi than you realize. I know, okay. I know, I know Jedi is like... Hold on. I, I think this is the age thing showing through again. Okay. I think newer, younger people might say that about Empire, but old Star Wars fans will not. Okay. 
uh, my uncle, big Star Wars buff. Okay. Um, older than you. Okay. He, his personal favorite is uh, Return of the Jedi. Why? Because you get to see Luke coming into his own. You see that in Empire. It's in a serious way in Jedi. You see, you see a realized Luke Skywalker in it, and that's. You see a realized Luke Skywalker in Empire. It's not He's the going same. back to fight Vader to save his it's friends. It's not the same. It is the same. It's not. You oh, okay. you have this fucking the the Luke that's been trained by Yoda that's super yeah. badass is the one that you get in Jedi, and that's why. That, yeah. that's yeah. that's why he's all about that the, the, like like uh, the empire is beaten by fucking muppets muppets holy shit speaking of muppets real quick do you realize how old muppet babies is how fucking 1984 is when that show came out so it's 32 it yeah it came out the year i was born yeah i remember being a kid like like in the 90s watching that on nickelodeon i didn't I realize do i didn't muppet realize baby. i didn't realize it was that fucking old it's old as shit dude, dude i am old and that show was fuck I ended up looking at a bunch of 80s cartoons this week. Yeah. Like, like YouTube ch- search crappy 80 cartoons. Did you know they did a cops TV show? A cops cartoon? No, they didn't. Yes, they did. So it's cops set in the future. Oh, God. Oh, it's so bad. It is so bad. Did they play the song? No. Oh, I don't remember because it was just clips. Oh. It was just clips. And then there was a, the weirdest show. Bunch of kids out in the woods. UFO lands. The UFOs are dinosaurs. I remember the show. But they were all plant eaters. I remember the show. And the, the bad show. dinosaurs were all carnivores. It was like this weird knockoff of Transformers where the carnivores were trying to take over Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking so, weird. So, I was actually going to bring up Transformers. I bought Gen 1 Transformers the first season for Terra a while back. Yeah. And I was going through and watching it. And I Sorry. was like, this is legitimately bad. Yeah. Like, I love it because it's Transformers, but I'm watching it and I'm... Like, Optimus Prime is fucking lame. Yeah. yeah like, no. In a serious way. And this is what he did in it. You go over there and move those Energon cubes. You go over there. I'm really upset about Megatron. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> okay, yeah. that, That's the extent of it. Well, I think we look at Transformers as, like, that show growing up that we love. Uh-huh. Like, Beast Wars is where it was at. Beast Wars was fucking good, though. Beast Wars... Like, there was still, a storyline. And it still holds up. Well, Transformers Prime is really good, too. Is it? I haven't watched Transformers it, Prime. It's very good. I know uh, One-Armed Will's a big fan of the Transformers stuff, and he loves all of it. But yeah, I gener- like the movie. The movie's good, because they all dance to Dare to be Stupid. Yeah. And then Optimus Prime dies. No, the movie was good, but they like they came into it, and they're like, guess what? Motherfuckers are dead. Optimus Prime, dead. Bumblebee, you don't know yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And Bumblebee was the little brother. You're like, oh my god, no... Like, yeah, we look at, like, going back and watching shows. Like, I tried to watch Power Rangers the other day. Have you tried to watch Power Rangers? I actually have. I still enjoy Power Rangers. Like, I, I still legitimately season? enjoy it, yes. Cause How? My, okay, How so, can you still enjoy so this So, my show? kids, it, it's the walk down memory lane. Um, I get that, but... It, that's, why, that's why I like it. Okay, there's no, like, it's not rooted in good storytelling or anything like that. It's solely <laughs> nostalgia. Because we're watching it, and I owned the Pudgy Pig episode on VHS. Okay. That episode came on, and I was like, oh, shit, the Pudgy Pig. And my kids are like, Dad, you can't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a bad show. It's not good. It's not the acting particularly is horrible. Great. It's you're. I'm not saying you're wrong. But you know what the worst part is? Like, because I've been Netflixing a lot. Netflixing. Is that a word? Net- it is now. Net- Net- Netflixing? Yeah, okay, whatever. You've been jamming the Netflix. Yeah. Um, they put VR Troopers and, oh and Beetleborg God. and the whole like Power Rangers knockoffs are now on Netflix. Yeah. And they're all just as bad. My kids love fucking Beetleborgs. How can My you not? three-year-old. Yeah. He's like, I want to watch Beetleborgs. Let's watch Beetleborgs. <laughs> and uh, it's it, that one is really bad. I couldn't get into that one when it was on TV. Um, Power Rangers were better than that. You know, I remember... I, I'm still impressed that Power Rangers is still going strong today. How? I, I don't know. Like, they still have new shows no, coming No, I mean, out. how are you impressed by that? Just the fact that a crappy show like this, normally when kid shows come out, like, they hit a generation. Like, they, 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 that, they, that was a cultural phenomenon. Like, but it hits a generation, and then it fades away. And, like, 
You grew up Not like Power Rangers. No, and there's been two that I know of: Power Rangers and Pokemon. Pokemon and Power Rangers have gone through generations. I watched Power Rangers when I was a kid. I watched Pokemon when I was a kid. Now your kids are watching it. My my nieces or my cousins' kids are okay, watching time it. Time out though. Transformers. No, they're not watching Transformers. They are. My not not the kids I my know. My kids do. Well, yeah, but you're raising your kids right. Am I? <laughs> I mean, I subjected them to Gen One Transformers. That's, that's fine. That's what we grew up watching. When, when you're young, you just care about laser battles. But yeah, the fucking biggest, baddest Transformer in that is like, I would like to avoid this conflict. You guys go over there and fight Megatron, and He's I'll try not. to sneak up behind him. Optimus Prime's not the biggest, baddest. Megatron is the biggest, baddest. You know why? Because he turns into a fucking gun. You know who the biggest, badass actually is? Starscream? Yep. Starscream. Because he's like, I'm gonna stab you in the back, and his intentions are fucking sinister, and he is blatantly apparent about them <laughs> through everything. He's like, Megatron, when you die, I will lead the Decepticons. He really is the Dwight Schrute of the Transformers. He's such a <laughs> beast. That's probably where they got the idea for Dwight. They were like, we were going through the archives. and <laughs> Okay, so we want to make Transformers in the office. And that's kind of what they did. Oh my god. All the, all the office is is a remake of Transformers. Huh. Yeah. It really is. All right. Ah, new you things. guys are never going to watch that show the same. <laughs> They're going to be like, this is much better storytelling than Gen 1. It, well, it is. <laughs> but, oh, man. God. So, yeah, Power Rangers was bad. But I, I do want to talk about this real quick. Since, since it's a nerd roulette episode, I have the first topic of discussion. Shoot. Nostalgia that actually holds up. Like, Ooh. like you know, Power Rangers is bad. And you and you watch Power Rangers and you're like, ha, ah, it's fun for me because it's when I was a kid. It takes yeah. me back. But how about shows you watched as a kid that today you go back and you watch and they still hold up? You're still excited about it. There are shows that I, I'm trying to think of a couple because I know there there were a few that just had some deep concepts that you kind of carry for the rest of your life. Um, so I'm going to throw out one. Yeah. The Batman animated series. That That's actually a very good one. Like, I was re-watching episodes the other day and how dark that shit's deep how dark that show was how they towed the line between what like that show would not be on the air today there's no way that that show would be on like that's not true you think you think they'd put that show out there for kids oh absolutely you think like abc family would pick it up yeah they're not see, showing do you it see now. the shit that's out there for kids now abc family wouldn't pick it up because that's a disney property fair enough okay so no they would not um but yeah ab- it, absolutely because like that show was so dark it, it was like, but Hear me out here. Watch fucking Rick and Morty or Adventure That's Time. That's not... Rick and Morty and Adventure Times aren't targeted for kids. Kids just happen to pick it up. It's cartoon motherfucking network. Yeah, but Rick and, and Morty's on Adult Swim. during the day. Rick and Morty's on Adult Foster's Swim. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. That show was pretty legit. It was very good. It dealt with a lot of adult concepts. Um, one that held up, the 90s X-Men show, taught yeah. us so much about racism, difference, and yeah. all that. And it was in a very deep way. And that show fucking... Like... Aliens and shit show well, up in there. And, and what that show did that, that, that like a lot of shows didn't do is was, it was very serialized. Like you did oh, not yeah. miss an episode. Of no, X-Men you couldn't because you were lost. It was a fucking soap. Like opera. when they did the fucking Phoenix Saga, that yeah. whole like twenty season, that twenty part, that whole yeah. kid, you were glued every Saturday watching X Men. Um, one that uh, Roroni Kenshin is actually an anime that I got into, and that's the one. What was it? Roroni Kenshin. The fuck. So it was about the samurai, who he was. Like the most feared samurai during wartime in Japan, and he it killed a fuck ton of people. And he put his sword away, and he's like, "I can't kill people anymore because it's not right." Um, so he has a new sword made, and it's called a sakabato, and it's a reverse blade sword. So the sharp edge is actually on the back. Okay. And he is a wanderer. He basically goes around, and he's almost silly. It's almost comical how the guy is. Like, you hand him a... They would hand him, like, a barrel of rice, and he's falling over and stuff. And they're like, you give the guy a barrel of rice, and he's a normal sissy. You give him a sword, and he's a god. And uh, it was very good. They It really, really delved into uh, your sense of right and wrong. Now, I was 15, 14 years old watching this show. Um, but th- there was a lot in that that, like, really strikes you. Like, it, it, it gives you an appreciation for life and all that stuff. Like, for me, looking at the Batman show, it was when Two-Face first came came to be. Um, remember, like, so he, he gets hit with the acid. Yeah. And, and you don't see his face. Everything is fine. 
And then all of a sudden, the lightning storm comes, and he's sitting in the hallway, and the lightning strikes. And you and, see and you that, see that face. like, like, like being a kid that that that, that terrorized me. But watching it like as an adult, I actually watched this yesterday. I was like, "Oh, dude, I feel so I feel so bad for him right now." Right? Like, like, like that. The fact that they can convey both emotions at different times in your life is, was amazing for well, that show. Th- there's also everything with Harley Quinn. Yeah, you, you know, see this insane relationship. Yeah. Hold on, Roger Rant time. Okay. Hey, nerds, listen up. You fuckers out there posting all this shit about how you want a romance like the Joker and Harley oh Quinn. Oh, God. Knock it the fuck off. That is the worst relationship to idolize the in the history. sociopath and the lady with Stockholm Syndrome. Right, the lady that gets beat every time she disagrees with Mr. J. Fuck you guys. Like, like I get you want to be edgy and cool, but find a different couple to look up to. Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. Fucking uh, Morticia and... Gomez. Oh my God, they're they're beautiful though. They are beautiful, and they love each other, and they're very weird, they're very freaky, and it works. But their love is so deeply rooted in those characters; it's fucking ridiculous, man. But it's fine. It's not an well, abusive. No, it's not abusive. It's not it's, an abusive fucking relationship. That is the. It's honestly, it's one of the more romantic TV relationships that you will see. For Christ's sakes, the Joker made Harley Quinn get an abortion. Remember this. Yeah? He is not the loving man that everyone wants him out to be. No. Yeah. No, he's a sociopath. Like, Yeah, no, he's totally a sociopath. And I'm fucking tired of hearing these fucking teeny bopper wannabe bullshits go, I'm going to love like Joker and Harley Quinn. I'm going to find me a Joker. Get fucked. Find someone who loves you for who you are and won't beat your ass. Maybe she needs her ass beat. Oh, well, that's what her dad's for. Just fucking thirteen year old bitches talking about Well, you know about what's funny shit. is I've seen a lot of memes that were saying what you're saying right now. Good going around Facebook. They're Good. like, you do not want that. You want more of this. To be honest with you, we're we're in the height of the political season, you so want, I avoid Facebook like you the want, plague. You want more of Batman and Batgirl? No, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a healthy relationship. It's just, it's just sex. sex. <laughs> I actually watched that the other day. I did not like the Killing Joke. The killing joke part was good. Yes. That 40 minutes was fantastic. I was going to say, you can't really be upset about that part. No, it's the other parts. Did, oh, explain to me this Francis or Francois or whatever this asshole's name was that they depict to be basically the Joker at the beginning of that. They're like, this guy's going to be the Joker, and then he, he's gone. Nothing to do with the story. I think I, you mean you mean the Red Hood? No. no. Okay. No, you I'm mean, talking... You mean Francis Paris? Yes. Yeah, I don't fucking know. It, zero sense. It, it had nothing to do with it was part. Of, it was part of that fucking Batgirl backstory. It was that, that stupidity, though. Yeah. It was fucking sheer stupidity, because her interaction with the Joker in that was extremely limited. So to be like she had dealt with a sociopath before, with but, a long face. But she... No. What no, the fuck? No, yeah, no. What the fuck? Stop. That movie... Like, like, I was watching a video after I watched this movie on YouTube, and someone put it up very point blankly. Was there not a woman anywhere near this production that could have been like, hold on. Do you know what the fuck you're doing? Because you, you took one of the most pivotal roles, the pivotal moments in Bat history, and you made it really bad. Really bad. Like, so bad that I don't know if I want to see Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill come back and be the Joker in no, Batman no. Bad. This is all you do. You pretend the first part of the movie didn't happen. Maybe they'll come out with a director's cut that's just 40 minutes long. I, I have a director's cut. It's, <laughs> it's called, called I Fast, Fast Forward. Forward yeah. uh, Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and... All right, now we're on no, the movie. We're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah, no, it was bad. I, I watched it, and I was like, okay, I know, I knew what I was getting into when I, when I started watching it, but I didn't know at the same time. I, I was like, okay, it's going to be bad. Batgirl, Batman are going to have sex. And I'm watching this, and you know me on a personal level... My whole social justice bullshit just never goes off. And I was sitting there going, what the fuck? It, no, it was silly. So um, bad. But, like, as soon, like, going in to see the movie, because I went and saw it in theaters. Um, going in to see it, I had already known that this other shit was going to happen. So, like, it existed and I occupied the space that it was in. <laughs> I did not acknowledge or identify with it. <laughs> That's fair. So once the movie actually started, I was like, oh, hey, the movie's on. It was like it was like watching the fucking commercials on TV. They're yeah. there. Okay. You kind of have to deal with them. Okay. 
I got through the commercials. <laughs> and then the movie started. And then the production started, and I was like, oh, here we go. So, real quickly, though, I think the uh, the 90s cartoon we forgot to mention that might have been the best. Which one? Spider-Man. The animated series? The animated Spider-Man Fox series. It was good. I liked X-Men better. Really? Yeah. I, I like Spider-Man better, and I can tell you why. Why? Uh, X-Men came out first and was a runaway hit, so they threw more money into Spider-Man. Okay. And then you actually saw they took more time with Spider-Man, so you had a better animation, you had better better budgetary, and you told more Spider-Man stories that needed to be told. Like, that was that is the best adaptation of the Venom saga we've ever gotten. Yeah? Yeah. yeah and no, then, hands, and, hands down. And, and they moved on to Carnage and all of it, and it was really good. Really it, it was good. cool. It was cool. I love the Spider-Man cartoon. Until the, ep- the final episode they brought Uncle Ben back. I didn't even know that happened. Yeah, yeah. Bring him back for a little bit. Yeah, bring him back for a little bit. See, it's that whole all good things must come to an end (laughs) concept. Sometimes I'll end things myself. (laughs) And yours was Venom's done. I'm good. No, I watched some Carnage after that. Uh, I watched a bunch of Mysterio on there. Yeah, because Mysterio's fucking awesome in it. Mysterio was really good. Um, You also had Daredevil show up in that show. Oh, dude! When Daredevil showed up in that. I was a kid. That was my first exposure to Daredevil. So good. And I was like, fuck. Done. Well, okay. Done. Fine. All right. Second. Second nerd roulette. No, you go. No, no, no. Um, go ahead. All right. Second nerd roulette. Biggest crossover slash storyline of the 90s. Can be TV. Can be comics. Can be a, mo- uh, a couple of movies that like was awesome for you. Like the Green Ranger saga mm-hmm. and Power Rangers as well, an example. Uh, I mean... When Kimberly found out Tommy was bad, okay, the Green Ranger saga was good. I wouldn't call that a crossover because that all no, no, from so, the same story. Yeah, I'm going to say like saga, like continuing oh, my story. favorite saga. Yeah, let's say saga, not okay. just crossover. I said crossover in case you wanted to say Fatal Attractions from the X Men comics. Okay, know? I got you. I got you, know? you. So, so a serial, like like the best miniseries, or... the be- best miniseries from the '90s. Um, there was there was a lot of stuff in the Wolverine comics that happened. Such as? Wolverine stabbed Sabretooth in the brain. Yeah, okay. Um, that, I mean, we, I've pointed it out quite a few times. <laughs> there are a few books leading up to this particular issue of Wolverine and a couple after it, and it's very good. Um, and it's almost 90s is the death of era. This was like Death of Sabretooth, and uh, they had built a Sabretooth that you kind of, in a fucked up way, identify with here. Okay. And... Then Wolverine fucking snabs him in the brain. See, I think so. So as comic fans, we talk about '90s garbage. Uh huh. Like, like we we talk about the '90s era comics being crap. I think that's wrong. Like I'm thinking about all the good stuff that came out in the '90s in comics. It's fucking Spawn. Spawn. Spawn's good. Spawn's very good. Well, and with what it was doing in the '90s. Like, like, like even if you don't care about the Spawn character, the Spawn book. What what that book represented was very good. Fucking pure rebellion. Pure rebellion against the two, the, the big two. Creators own their own shit. Creators have the right well, to do also, what they want. Well, also, you had the fucking comic book code authorities, and they're like, we're not stamping your bullshit and on our books. We don't give fuck a you. fuck. No, it was awesome. It, Spawn was badass. Um, what else was it? The Green Ranger saga was good. I actually thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beast Wars, it, they started to get into more of the Cybertronian crossovers because you got to see flashbacks and stuff of when the Autobots crashed on Earth. Right. Uh, and then when they but, went transmetal. No, no, it's when Raptor died. When Raptor died in oh Beast my, Wars. When, when <laughs> fucking uh, Dinobots, what they called him, when Dinobot went down because he he was supposed to be an Autobot all Right. He landed and the Decepticons got to him first. Right. He switches sides. Mm-hmm. So then when everything goes transmetal and they got all shiny and new looking, they the fucking idiot Decepticons remake Grimlock again, or Dinobot, and uh, guess what? He fucking does the same shit again <laughs> and becomes an Autobot again. And it was awesome. And then he dies. Again. Yeah. No. It, again. Yeah. And it was a very... He died fucking blaze of glory well, death. Like, 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 so they're, they're holding him down. Like, like, he's breathing his last breath and he goes, I want you to remember me for the good and the bad I did in my life. Remember me as a person, not just as shining examples of going down a blaze yeah. of glory. I was like, oh, that, that, that is it, storytelling for children. That is uh, hands down one of the most relatable characters that came out of any of the 90s. Yeah, why things. can't we 
view history like 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 we view Grimlock here or Dinobot. Because think about it. You remember him for the good and the bad he did, and overall you say he's good. Not the the bad shit he did did not wash away his good deeds. It just made him a full person. Yeah. And for me it was the death of Colossus. Like the whole legacy Colossus the whole legacy virus thing in the nineties, like the death of his sister and him sacrificing himself to be the cure. Oh was that just a big AIDS thing though? Yeah, it was it was AIDS for the mutants kinda. Like it was it was a virus that was released to kill off mutants. Uh, Mojo had something to do with it. It was a whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was it was the AIDS in air quotes yeah. type thing. Because um, Marvel has always done a good job of pushing social issues in their books. I I'm not always going to call it a good job. Lately, they've dropped the ball. They well, Marvel is also guilty of ramming agenda down readers' throats. Um. I'm all about staying on top of social issues or things that are current, okay? That's that's just being an effective storyteller in, in the present. Right. That's fine. But once you start to ram political beliefs, like whether it be writers or whomever, down your readers' throats, it kind of detracts from the medium in and of itself. I think, I think when I say that, I was thinking of X-Men only. And I think, uh, like, like you're true when you start talking about like Spider Man or comics that really, they really don't need the social justice warriors. But X Men was a perfect. X no X Men is a social justice comic. It is perfect for that, and and and, and, and it's a shame to see what Marvel is doing to X Men now. It is. Um, I kind uh, I I go on my high horse about how I hate reboots, but if a franchise needs a reset button, it is that one. It is. Let's go back to humans hating mutants, Sentinels on the streets. And just start over. Because you saw Magneto go from just being a bad guy to being relatable. And now I don't know what the fuck's going on with him. Well, like, Mag- yeah. Well, because in the comics, within the last couple of years, Magneto, and this is when they did this Axis thing, which was awful. Yeah, we don't talk about this. Um, but Magneto has, well, one of the coolest panels that I've read in a very long time is one of Magneto in Axis, and he's like, I can kill Nazis. I live for this shit. <laughs> Talking about Red Skull, and I'm like, fucking A. Like, that was cool as shit. That you, was cool. you, you read that coming out of Magneto's mouth, and he's in this badass black suit, and you're like, fucking A. You go kill some fucking Nazis, Magneto. Like, get, okay, fuck it. Now we're just going to talk about the downfall of the X Men comics, because what the fuck happened? Like, in the 90s, it blew up with Jim Lee and, and, and Joseph Loeb or whoever. Writing the shit. Of course, Claremont. Well, okay, so recently... Um, I know... Well, I, like, I know the studio. Like, like what, what Marvel... Has a lot to do with yeah. that. But, fuck! Well, even in the comics, though, like, one of the problems here... Even in the comics, like... And this is... Again, you, you get a political agenda rammed on your throat. Like, on a daily basis, because of the society that we live in, you receive a lot of this bullshit about people's political beliefs, this, that, and the other, and there's a line of division. And this line of division is even brought to comic books at this point. And I'm sorry, I don't need that in my escape. Like, you can have something that's about acceptance and about trying to find your place in the world, and that's good. Um, But once you start to take that and bring current political issues into it and drive a wedge that's already in society further into it, I take issue with that. X-Men, though, is the place for that. There's a, look at look at the original Star Trek series. I mean, the original Star Trek series was nothing more than a, than a social commentary exercise. Mm-hmm. That's all it was, and he found a way around the censors. That's why it was set in space. Um, X Men has that potential to be that again to make us to 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 not jam social commentary by down our throats, but make us think about it. And that see, and that's what I'm saying. My issue is when you're writing something with a bias, like if you don't like this, you are bad. There's an issue there. If you put something out there simply to be observed, it's up to the reader to make the determination of what right and wrong is. And that's all ultimately going to be based off of what your beliefs are. And that's what we had with, with, with the X-Men. I mean, you had... No, originally, yeah. No, no, Any think, more, about it, no. think about it. Because you, you could look at it from the human point of view and be like, I don't understand why they hate mutants. That's really wrong. Look at what Xavier does. Uh-huh. Then on the flip side, go, no, I get it. Look at what Magneto and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants have done. The damage, the destruction, the deaths that they have caused. 
because they're putting they're, they're putting out for the extinction of mankind. Yep. So we need to fight back. And I think that right there, like go back to that story. No, because but that was good. There's not. You don't have to choose. Like you, you, you as the reader are left to decide what is right and wrong there. And that's good writing. That's good storytelling. So let's go back to that. Mar- Marvel, bring us good X Men comics. God, I want them back. I really do. Like Joss Whedon did an amazing run on Astonishing X Men, but there was nothing to it but them being superheroes. X Men shouldn't be just superheroes. There needs to be something there, something personal, something. Well, no, they're, they're, X Men are awesome because they're. They're fucking renegade, and in the face of people hating them, they're saving people. Right, and goes, even even the characters like Wolverine, who that guy doesn't give a fuck. No, but he's doing it too because it's it's, it's fucking the right. right. Thing to, yeah, it's so right. let's hit the reset button on X Men. Let's go back, reset X Men. Let's do it. I'm down. You down? Uh, it's done. All right. Hey, Marvel, Disney, Mickey Mouse, Goofy, listen. I want to see an issue one next year of X-Men back to where it should be. I know you got your issues with Fox and then still wanting to make movies, but hey, Marvel, you signed that deal. You gave them the rights to it. Don't let them interfere with your paperback. No, your paperback should be the best thing that's coming yeah. up. Yeah, honestly, if you want to stick it to Fox, give them the big middle finger, make an awesome fucking comic. Yeah, because all that's going to happen is people are going to go watch then their the- shitty movie and then they're going to be like, what are these fucking comics about? And your comic sales are going to go up. Yeah, and then deny them the rights to transform your awesome stories into movies. Yep. That that that. And then buy it back and make it right. Yeah. Buy it back, make it right. Very simple. Yeah, we're we're good here. We're good. All right, Chris, your turn for a nerd roulette topic. Okay, nerd roulette topic. Um. <sighs> fuck. Okay, we've got a bunch of a uh, bunch of new video games coming out. Bunch of new video games, yes. What video games are most enticing to you? Fuck you. Yeah. Um, so this, this honestly, as much as I bitch about first-person shooters, uh, I've been playing the Battlefield 1 beta. It's really good. Is it? It's really good. Flying planes is so much fun. Um, this is going to be a very expensive year for me. I've got Skyrim coming out, remastered for Xbox awesome. One. What uh, what's uh what's uh? You've already played it. I I didn't beat it though. So you never finished the I game. Never so finished now you're game. playing it to finish it. Right. It's just you're gonna play the, the mastered the, game. Yeah, the pretty version. Okay. I've got I've got Battlefield One. I've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare f- coming back out. I've got NHL Seventeen. Like I'm gonna spend a lot of money on games here in the next two months. What about you? Destiny Rise of Iron. Oh yeah. That's in like another week or so. Oh hey. Hey, so we need to download. Let's, let's. I'm, I'm putting it on the fucking show now. Download D and D online for Xbox. Oh, I already did. I'm gonna download it when I get home. We need to do. We we'll make characters and we'll start a guild. The Entertain the Geeky Guild. Boom. So if you guys are playing D and D online, or you want to start, uh, we'll give you our uh, online personas after we get it all figured out and uh, hit you up. You guys can join us to play some games. And one of the things that I wanted to touch on here geeks get fit is going on it's going strong if uh if you guys have not gotten into this yet and you're interested send us an email at entertain the or entertain the geeky at gmail.com and uh say hey i'm interested in geeks get fit yeah we've got what seven total right now yeah there's seven people doing this um some so, people that are kicking ass. So let's talk, let's talk about the prizes then, because there are prizes that there are prizes that. So if you want to get involved, we're gonna we're gonna I think cutoff should be next Friday. Cutoff will be next Friday. So next Friday, okay. let's run it till the first week of October. I know we said thirty days, but if we got people coming in late, yeah, that's fine. Um, so we've got we're gonna do three three prizes, maybe more, but but three is what we have planned. Uh, obviously the grand prize is the gift shop. Yep, gift, gift card. card. And an Entertain the Geeky shirt. And an Entertain the Geeky shirt. Then you've got, we're just going to give you guys one one winner, a random shirt, an Entertain the Geeky shirt. Yep. And then the big, big, big prize is you're going to get a t-shirt and you're going to get to be on the show with us. And we're going to have you come on. We're not going to talk about Geeky as Fit. You will control the topics of conversation for that. For It'll that, be that your episode. episode. You, you come to us, you say, I want to talk about My Little Pony. Damn it, we're going to talk about My Little Pony. And if you are not in the St. Louis area and you still want to partake in this, that's fine. We can do it via Skype. Yep. There, we live in a wonderful world of technology where we can make this happen. We have the science. I don't know. If it's weird science, but we have it. Weird science. Oh, my God. I, real quickly. Fuck it. All right. 
Best 80s horror movie. Best eight, fucking Freddy Krueger is my favorite. Nightmare on Elm Street. See, I love Nightmare on Elm Street and I love the Jason movies. I'm, I'm going to dig deep on this one. The remake of The Blob. Really? Yeah. You know why? Why? They kill a fucking nine-year-old in that movie. That's something they don't do in movies nowadays. Like in horror movies, kids get off, they get traumatized, and that's about it. This kid in the sewer gets covered by the blob, and you see his skeletal form coming towards the screen. It was fucking badass. That's pretty brutal. It is pretty brutal. No, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, just because I love Freddy, The Fly was actually really good, too. I just bought The Fly. I haven't, I, I'm getting ready to rewatch it. Which favorite Nightmare movie? Nightmare movie? Which one is your favorite Nightmare movie? I don't understand. The movie Nightmare on Elm Street. Which oh, one is your oh favorite? It's, it's the first one. First one? The first one. See, Nightmare I think, on Elm Street. I think the new Nightmare is the best. The one with uh, Rorschach? What? No, 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 no. It's called The New Nightmare. Oh, okay. Wes Craven's oh, New Wes Nightmare. Oh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Okay, which I, know I what think you're talking about now. was so far ahead of its time. It was It was like, pretty good. I think was, that movie, It wasn't that early 90s, though? It was early 90s, so I guess it doesn't count as 80s, but damn it, you brought up fucking Nightmare on Elm Street. What I like about the movie was it was a movie within a movie. Yeah. And I think if that movie would have waited another six or seven years to come out, because it was so ahead of its time with just that premise. Well, you know, one of the funnest movies that I think I had ever seen in theaters, and part of it is because I was a preteen or a teenager, early teenage years, um, fucking Freddy vs. Jason coming out. Love that movie. It was so much fun to watch. Did you see the new Friday the 13th movie? The it came out a couple years ago, the remake. No, I went with my brother and saw that, and it's one of the few movies where I didn't predict who was going to survive. Right, really? Like it threw me for a loop. I was like, oh, that that girl, that guy, that guy, they're going to live, and nope, dead, dead, dead. And I was like, huh? No, what fucking kicked ass about Freddy versus Jason is it was just a fucking hack 'em up movie. Like you have both of them are killing motherfuckers, then they start killing each other while they're still killing motherfuckers. Yeah holy shit yeah no it was it was it was good it was enjoyable i wish i wish they would have done the sequel oh i know like i know i wish that would have happened i wish that it came to fruition well because that came out right around the same time as the thomas jane punisher which oh. was fucking amazing i don't know why people hate the thomas jane punisher you can't that movie was fucking great have you seen the director's cut yes i've seen the director's oh, cut. so good that, that movie was fun even if you don't get the director's cut that's a good fucking no movie. it is i I never understood why that movie, like it's a modern day western. Yeah, it's not. It's not exactly the Punisher. It was not Garth Ennis's run, which was happening at that time. But damn, it was good, dude. It was fucking amazing. Why couldn't that take off? Why did I get a Blade Three and not a Punisher Two with Thomas Jane? Here's what I want to know: Why did they do fucking Punisher Warzone after that shit? Because uh, that was awful. See, you know what's odd? My brother likes Punisher Warzone. Your brother's Punisher. mistaken. I keep telling him that. Well, both are better than the Dolph Lundgren Punisher. I don't even think of that one. <laughs> Is that because he doesn't wear the skull on his shirt and it's it, only on his knife? It's pretend. No, it's a movie. It's like the Captain America movie from the 90s. It's there. No, it's not. Yeah. Not in yeah. my world. No, it's, it's there. It's there. Nick Nick Fury and oh, Dolph Lundgren yeah. beat up the Yakuza. Or there's the Thomas Jane Punisher. And its sequel, Loose Change. And then there's... Our Spare Change. Spare Change. Spare Change. Loose Change is a whole different thing. I didn't watch Spare Change, though. You didn't? No. Dude. Do you know the premise behind Spare Change? Huh. All right, so, like, it's you, you see Thomas Jane in the, in the van. The broken down Punisher van. Yeah. You know, the blue van, whatever. He gets out. He's drinking. He, he throws a bottle of Jack to the side. Goes in. Starts doing laundry. Outside are these, these drug-dealing gangbangers picking on a girl. He walks over. He walks across the street looks at them keeps on walking goes to the liquor store uh ron perlman is sitting in a wheelchair yeah and has this whole talk about how he would do something if he could get up you know and he talks about being in vietnam and how he got shot and castles like bottle of jack gets a bottle of jack walks outside and just beats the fuck out of these guys with a bottle of jack and you're like oh what the fuck's going on because it's still not you don't know what's the punisher yet. yeah then he, he, he breaks the bottle, kicks those guys' ass, goes back, grabs his laundry, flips the shirt, and you see the Punisher shirt. And then he puts it in his laundry basket and walks back to the van. That's the whole movie? That's the whole movie. Yeah. How have I not seen that? I don't know. It's online. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's like I don't know. 13 minutes long. Oh, okay. So it's not a full movie. It's not a full movie, no. Okay. That, that's why it's I It's like 13 minutes it. long. You have sex, You can have sex like five times by the time it takes you to watch that movie. It's fucking 13. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, uh, 
I, I will actually go watch that tonight. Yeah, that's um, good. Because there's, that's the Punisher, and then there's also the Punisher from the Daredevil series on Netflix. Which I liked. He's but not as good as Thomas Jane, he's not, No, he's not Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane is the best movie Punisher we're ever going to get, or Marvel Punisher you know what I on think, screen. You know what I think the biggest problem is? Huh? Fucking John Travolta was in that movie. John Travolta was fucking awesome in it. I, I'm not saying he wasn't, but there, there, there is a connotation that comes where like, oh, John Travolta's in a movie. Oh my god. If you don't like that movie because John Travolta's in it, Fuck you. I know. I love that movie. No, I'm just I'm putting love, that out into the universe. I love that entire movie. The, the, I love I love the characters that were in it. It was very... I love the Russian showing up. The movie was well written. Yeah. It was fucking action-packed and kick-ass. I want to go home and watch it now. I'm going to watch it tonight. Yeah. And then I'm going to watch Spare Change. Yeah. I'm actually going to watch Spare Change first. Yeah. Um, because it I be haven't seen... Dirty Laundry. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm going to fucking... I'll find it, it. I'll find it. It's good. It's good. All right. One more topic from you. One more topic from me. What posters did you have hanging in your room as a kid? I, oh, um, as a kid, I didn't really have a lot of posters hanging up. Really? Um, no, uh, when I got older. But my cousin had a poster that I will remember forever. And it was a Turtles poster. And it was re- it was drawn by Kevin Eastman and Peter Lard. And it was like them coming, like just flying through the air with their weapons drawn. And he hung it above the ceiling, above the bed. Oh, that's badass. So when you would sleep, you'd wake up, and the first thing you see is the turtles coming down on you. And that was awesome. That's fucking sick. Um, when I got older, for me, it was a lot of gaming posters, like Magic or Star Trek CCG. Yeah. A lot of stuff you got at the free game store to hang yeah. out. That, that, that was my poster collection. Mine were Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee? That was what? Bruce Lee everything. There's one, there's there's one, one in here now. Yeah. But uh, growing up, my dad raised me on Bruce Lee. And... I had fucking, I have still my fucking Bruce Lee VHS box sets yeah. and shit like that. And uh, yeah, posters, t-shirts. I had Bruce Lee t-shirts that I got as a kid that I kept. Motherfucker um, could light a match with a nunchuck. Motherfucker. Bruce Lee is my father. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was weird for me because when I say in my room, I meant my, like my computer room. My room growing up was more like a studio apartment. Okay. It was very weird. Like I took over the basement. And it was just like, you would come down the stairs and there was my room. So you were that nerd. Yeah. In the no, mom's basement. I was that, yeah. When I was a kid, I, I lived, I lived in the basement. Like, like I just had this whole open room to myself and you just come down the steps and you were in my bedroom. So there was not a lot of wall space to hang posters. See, when I was young, we were poor. I was poor. Um, so like we lived in an apartment for a good while. Then when we finally moved into a house, it was, uh, the basement was unfinished because we were poor. Right. And... I, we didn't go down. I, I kept some old toys down there, and I would go down there to get, and it was my Power Rangers. Okay. okay. So, so fuck you, because how I ended up carpeting the base of my bedroom was my dad went to a, bu- a bunch of floor stores. I got a bunch of free samples. You know, they give you the carpet squares yeah. and free samples. That was my carpet and my floor That's was hilarious. all the free samples. I just laid them out. So, yeah, you guys were definitely poor, too. Yeah, yeah, no. And then, and then after the divorce happened, you know, okay, fuck it, here we go. Poor. Let's talk about being poor. Okay. What's the one food from growing up when you were poor that you will not eat today? I don't have one of those. Really? Really. Tuna noodle casserole. Oh, how did you fucking know that? Okay, so <laughs> I, I until about two years ago, I wouldn't fucking eat tuna. Right. Um, and it wasn't from growing up poor. I hated tuna. And I remember when I was about ten years old fucking thinking i was getting chicken helper (laughs) because it looked the same and getting tuna noodle casserole yeah or tuna helper yeah is what it actually was i was fucking pissed i fucking choked this shit down (laughs) and i'm like that was tuna and they're like yeah and i was like don't ever fucking make that when i'm around again no no see for me like my mom would make because my mom... That was eerie that you fucking said that, yeah, well, by the no, way. Well, because here's the thing. My mom, like... you know, I put that out of my mind. Being a single mom, and she, she worked two jobs, so she would make food that could last, you know, a couple days. No, you know? that shit will last fucking so, three years. So she, she, she would just take a box of macaroni and cheese, can of tuna and cheese and some peas and throw it in and cook it. <laughs> yeah. We'd eat that. And I cannot, to this day, I cannot touch tuna in the casserole. Same thing with spaghetti. See, I'm cool with fucking spaghetti, ramen noodles, 
fucking ramen just, noodles are awesome. Hot dogs, like hot fucking dogs. making a box of macaroni. Yep. Throw I, some hot dogs in the macaroni. I'll fucking do that shit. Fucking beans and weenies. Oh fuck yeah! I'll still eat that. Oh, shit. No, that shit's good. But like, there's certain foods. No, that the, the tuna noodle casserole. I just fucking. I didn't like tuna for forever. Oh, fucking bologna. Bologna. I cannot eat bologna. Not even a fried bologna sandwich? Fuck that. Oh, so good. I hate bologna. Um, <laughs> it's disgusting. It doesn't taste good. And then the fact that I know that that's scrap meat on top it of it. It is, yeah. Fuck I that. love. I love bologna. Like, like, like I, get, I get in weird moods, though, where I'm like, I was, I was at North Central a couple months ago. I like, I fucking wanted the bologna sandwich. And not just bologna on bread. I wanted bologna, lettuce, mayo, the whole nine yards. Fuck that. So shit. I ended up leaving the magic tournament to go to a grocery store. And I ended up making bologna sandwiches for all the nerds there. I'm out. Like, no, I was there to run it. But I ended up, like, making bologna sandwiches for everybody that was there. Because, damn it, I wanted good bologna sandwiches. Like, I spent high end. I went to Schnucks and got them a deli. I am a fucking snob when it comes to lunch meat. Because growing up, my grandpa would always buy deli meat. And he was very particular about the cuts of meat that he bought. So he taught me when I was about 10 years old what to look for when you're buying a cut of meat. How to find a nice marbled piece of meat. And I, that sticks with me to this day. That and Vidalia season. When Vidalia onions come out, I get excited every year. Um, so that's your memory of your, your grandfather was teaching you how to look at meat? I mean, that and why the Easter Bunny hides his eggs. Why does the Easter Bunny hide Because he doesn't want you to know he's been fucking chickens. <laughs> That's a dad grandpa joke right there. Yeah, he definitely. Yeah. I was eight. Um, yeah, that's a dad and a grandpa then, then joke. Then being yeah. a being about fourteen years old, I, so I've always been a relatively picky eater. And we got chicken wings, and there was something on one of my chicken wings, and I picked it off of it. And I don't know what it was, if it was just fucking like a garnish or something like that that they had used. I picked it off, and my grandpa goes, "You're not gonna be that picky when you're eating pussy." <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I was like, "Holy shit, grandpa!" <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's good stories. So, Geeks Get Fit. You guys got till Friday. Um, send us an email. Um, EntertainTheGeeky at gmail.com. EntertainTheGeeky at gmail.com. If you can't remember that, hit us up on Facebook. We'll send you the email. Yeah, I'm posting workouts of the day every day, but rest days. The rest days are Sundays. Um, so, today was a rest day. Dude, the Flash workout kicked my ass. The Flash workout was fucking like, mean. Like, I was like, fuck. Like I look at the I look at these workouts and I'm like, all right, anything that doesn't hurt my knees, I'm in for. And I'm like, fuck it, no, let's go balls to the walls. The first workout I did, and I was like, all right, whatever. Like I was tired, but I was good. The flash workout, I was like, nope, I'm done. Time out. How many rounds of the first workout did you do? Three. Okay, so you did the minimum. I did the minimum. Okay. Yeah. I, like okay, first off, I put in the 14 hour day that day at work. I'm not mad at you. You you look mad. No, I'm not mad. I'm trying to figure out where you were at with it. Because even fucking getting through three rounds when you're not used to doing that is no. difficult. Like, I did a 14-hour day uh, at work, and I came home. I was like, let me just bust this out real quick. I was going to hammer this out, did the three did the three sets, and I'm like, I'm good. Have you been getting your 12,000 steps in? Come on. Really? Yeah. You, I, you know what I've been doing? Pokemon Go? No, I don't run, run on routes at my real job. I didn't know if you were getting, yeah. like, no, fucking 12,000 no. steps in. 12,000 steps is me at, like, 10 a.m. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I fucking... Did you get your 12,000 steps in? Buddy, you don't even got to worry about that. <laughs> um, no, fucking Joe Moore said something to me on Facebook. He's He posted he posted a video, or he tagged me in a video of this kid drinking a bottle of water in under a second. And he's like, this is me trying to drink a gallon of water a day. And the kid fucking <laughs> just smashes this bottle of water into his mouth and it's gone. The bottle's there. The water's not in the fucking bottle. That's the thing about drinking a gallon of water a day. Like, if you just drink water, you're fine. Like, you don't have to push yourself to drink a gallon of water. I think you'd be surprised at how much you drink throughout the when day. When you're right? actually trying to drink water. Right. You just, yeah. just like, hey, guess what? I'm not going to drink tea today. I'm just going to drink water. Yeah. I'm not getting a soda for lunch. Let me grab a water. You will hit your water intake. Well, and there's no sugar or anything in this no. thing. So, or alcohol. Roger. You get fucked. Um... Or alcohol, so your body's metabolizing things properly. Yeah, I'm not giving up my drinking. That's what keeps me happy. How much weight have you lost? I don't know. I didn't weigh myself. That's okay. You don't yeah, I, I, whenever I go on diet, it's like, whenever I go on dietary plans, I never weigh myself because to me, that's putting a number. And if I don't, if something happens where I don't hit that goal, then you feel like you've wasted your time. And getting fit is not about losing weight. It's about getting healthy. 
Well, let me which ask, will happen. Let, let me ask you this: how how have you felt energy wise since you've? It's taken only on been what two days. We're three, four days in. Not today was arrested. There was no workout. And there's no workout, but there's eating. No, I'm fucking tired. Are you really? Do you know why I'm tired? Work. Yeah. <clears throat> so, being on the meal plans that we're on here, oh, I've so noticed hungry. my energy levels are through the fucking roof. Like today was Fat Man Day. I ate so much shrimp. So much shrimp, shrimp is fine if it's boiled. Oh, so much. Shrimp. He ate a bunch of boiled shrimp. That's fine. Oh, um, oh no, I didn't tell you about the desserts. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> uh, no, what I've noticed is that after breakfast, so I'm I'm doing the Chris Parsons bullshit meal plan. Okay. Um, because I'm Chris Parsons, and uh, I'm doing it's a fucking bowl of oatmeal with a scoop of Nutella and a scoop of peanut butter because I call it Reese's uh, oatmeal. Reese's oatmeal. Yeah. And then it's fucking. I'm taking two cans of tuna. In, in recipe motherfuckers listen up um so it's two cans of tuna you drain that shit you put it in a bowl then you take a scoop of jalapenos nope, sc- out. shut up a scoop of light mayo and then you put hot sauce in this out. i call it spicy tuna i put that on a fucking bed of quinoa god damn do you know how you sound when you say a bed of quinoa sexy yes yes because you heard my voice say a bed and you automatically think of getting laid. I do. I do. That is true. <laughs> true fucking story. That's what exactly. Fuck you know me so well. Because that's what I was going to say. No, it's not. What no. were you going to say? You were going to be like, you sound like an asshole. No, I was going to say you sound like a hipster douchebag. My bed of quinoa. No, you. Uh, so uh, the reason I use quinoa over rice is just because there's protein in it. I'm not so much going for weight loss. I'm actually going to put muscle on. Um, so I'm so trying, why don't you eat more? Why don't you eat like, you know. I am eating more meals, but it's also just protein intake needs to go up for me and I can't be fucking eating cake all the time. You can. I can't. Not and get what I want. <laughs> I can turn can. into a fat shit. Um, hey, nothing wrong with that. I don't want to be a fat shit. Hey, I'm a fat I'm a fat shit. Roger, you're changing that right now. Um No man, we're I, I'm stoked about it. My energy levels are actually up through the roof right now doing this and I cutting soda out, that's what surprised me. I can yeah. actually sleep at night, which is fucking weird. Oh, and, that's not a problem for my fat ass. Oh, see, I, I couldn't sleep at night. I was drinking so much fucking soda and shit that, and I didn't realize this was happening until I went without soda. I had a caffeine headache really bad one day, and then I laid my head down to rest, and I you fucking fell right asleep. And yeah. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Yeah. It was good. And I was tired at 10 o'clock. Okay. That was weird. All right, so, hit us up. Let us know if you want to partake in this. We've got prizes. We've got stuff to give out. Um, and you can get a better you. You can get a better you. No, well, yeah. Well, No, it's about feeling good. It like, is it's, about it, feeling it, good. I, you're fine the way that you are, okay? I'm uh, not. I, well, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not saying that you're inadequate because of the shape that you're in, because of where you're at physically. He, he kind of is, guys. You should see the look on his face right now. Yeah, I'm such a pretentious bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck this. This episode's over. <laughs> Like us on Facebook at Entertain the Geeky. Follow us on Twitter, Entertaining Geeky. Fuck you guys. No, we love you. Thank you for tuning in. You gonna you gonna say bye? Oh, hey, bye. So since there was already a fuck you, Chris Pine. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck to open this one, this little after comment on. Um, where's my money, Brian? Where's my money? Yeah, why why are you not paying our hosting right now? <laughs> <laughs> we kid, we kid. So yeah, seriously, no. no. I, like yeah, <clears throat> with work it was very hard to get in the routine, um, and it's still it's even harder because my work schedule changes every fucking day, so yeah. I don't have a set hours. Um, but yeah, like so you're talking about having this great energy and everything, and I'm like I would just like to be able to sleep eight hours before I have to get up and go to no, work. No, that's the thing. Um, so I sleep six hours. Uh, yeah, I'm lucky if I can get that in. No, no, no. That's that's all I really sleep, and it's because of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He said, if you're sleeping eight hours, no, you sleep faster. You sleep six hours. <laughs> <laughs> and what what's funny is studies have actually shown that you do best actually in three hour increments with sleep. Yeah, fuck that. Um, because that's that's how your body goes in and out of sleep cycles is in three hour increments. You know what? Fuck Arnold Schwarzenegger. He made a bad Terminator movie. If we said fuck everybody that's made a bad movie. I'm on board. We would be like go. no good movies. You ready? Are you ready? Fuck you, Christian Bale. Thank you for that one. Fuck you, Winona Ryder. That's Michael all. Keaton. Fucking Bruce Willis. 
god. Even this, even this. Fuck you, Kevin Smith. Cop Out was shit. Yeah, it was. You already got that one with Bruce Willis. I did, didn't I? Man, fuck you, Kevin Smith. Uh, no, we love you, Kevin um, Smith. You are our nerd leader. Um, what was bad? What was bad that Kevin Smith did? Uh, yeah, you don't got it. I, got, I had it with Cop Out, but you told me that didn't count. It doesn't. I really didn't care that for Zack and Mary. That was a studio movie. See, I liked Zack and Mary. Like, it was okay. It was his best of the studio movies. 